Every 100 minutes, an American football field disappears into the Gulf of Mexico. Not from a hurricane, not from a tsunami, just gone. Since the 1930s, Louisiana has lost roughly 2,000 square miles of land, an area about the size of Delaware. That's not a projection, that's already happened, and it's still going. Louisiana is experiencing the highest coastal land loss rate in the world, and the rate continues to accelerate. So why is this happening so fast? Why here? And can anything still be saved? When you think about coastal flooding, you probably think about sea level rise. But in Louisiana, that's only half the problem. The land itself is sinking. This process is called subsidence, and in some parts of coastal Louisiana, the ground is dropping more than 10 millimeters every single year. That might not sound like much, but over decades, it adds up fast. Three things are causing this. First, natural compaction. The Mississippi River has been depositing sediment for thousands of years, and that soft mud naturally compresses over time under its own weight. Second, groundwater and oil extraction. When you pump fluids out of the ground, the soil above it settles. And third, drained wetlands. Historically, marshes stayed saturated with water, which kept the soil stable. Drain them, and they collapse. Here's what makes Louisiana unique. It's losing land from both directions. The ocean is rising, yes, but the ground is also falling. It's a double attack, and the land doesn't stand a chance. For thousands of years, the Mississippi River built Louisiana. Every spring, floods would carry millions of tons of sediment downstream and spread it across the delta. The land grew, the marshes expanded. But in the 20th century, we stopped that process. In 1927, the Mississippi River unleashed one of the most destructive floods in American history. Over 27,000 square miles underwater, more than 600,000 people displaced, hundreds of lives lost. The federal response was massive. Build levees high enough and strong enough that the river would never break through again. Engineers built massive levees to protect communities from flooding and to create reliable shipping channels. The river was locked in place, and all that sediment that used to feed the wetlands, now it shoots straight past them and dumps into the Gulf of Mexico, where it does nothing. It solved the flooding problem, but it created a new one. The numbers are staggering. The Mississippi River carries enough sediment every year to build new land, but the levees we built force that sediment straight into the deep gulf, where it does nothing to rebuild the coast. And without fresh sediment to replace what's sinking and eroding, the marshes started collapsing. But even that wasn't enough to cause this level of destruction on its own. What really accelerated the collapse was something most people don't know about, oil and gas canals. Since the 1930s, energy companies have dredged more than 8,000 miles of canals through Louisiana's wetlands to access drilling sites. These canals did something devastating. They allowed salt water from the Gulf to pour into freshwater marshes. Here's why that matters. Coastal wetlands depend on specific vegetation that can only survive in freshwater or low salinity environments. When salt water floods in, that vegetation dies. And when the plants die, there's nothing holding the soil together. The marsh literally liquefies and washes away. Then there are the storms. Hurricanes Katrina, Rita, Delta, and Ida didn't just damage buildings. They ripped away enormous chunks of coastal land. And here's the feedback loop. Wetlands act as natural storm surge buffers. As Louisiana continues losing wetlands from subsidence, sediment starvation, and canal intrusion, each hurricane storm surge can travel farther inland, which destroys even more land, which makes the next hurricane even worse. It's a cycle that compounds the damage from all the other causes. So how does Louisiana compare globally? According to USGS data, Louisiana loses on average 30 to 50 square kilometers of coastal land every single year. That's the highest coastal land loss rate in the world. For context, the Brahmaputra Jamuna River in Bangladesh is famous for eroding riverbanks up to 5 meters per day at hot spots, the fastest single point migration on Earth. The Mekong Delta is suffering severe subsidence. The Netherlands would be underwater without massive engineering. But Louisiana is different. It's not just one problem, it's subsidence, sediment starvation, wetland destruction, 
and hurricanes all happening at once. Different types of disasters, both catastrophic in their own ways. But Louisiana isn't giving up. In 2023, the state released an updated Coastal Master Plan, a 50-year, $50 billion strategy to fight back. The money will fund 65 restoration projects, 12 structural flood protection projects, and $11 billion in non-structural measures like home elevation and floodproofing. The crown jewel of the plan is the Mid-Barataria Sediment Diversion. At nearly $3 billion, it's the largest coastal restoration project in U.S. history. The idea is simple. Cut a controlled opening in the Mississippi River levee and let sediment-rich water flow back into the wetlands, the way it used to naturally. The diversion will move 75,000 cubic feet of water per second and is expected to build or sustain 13,000 to 26,000 acres, 53 to 105 square kilometers over 50 years. But the diversion is controversial. When freshwater floods into Barataria Bay, it will dramatically change the ecosystem, potentially devastating oyster beds and shrimp populations that commercial fishermen depend on. The state is caught between two impossible choices, save the land or save the fisheries. They chose the land. The hope is that new marshes will eventually create new fishing grounds, but in the short term, entire livelihoods are at stake. Other major projects include rebuilding barrier islands using dredged sand, creating new marshland by pumping sediment into shallow bays, and upgrading levees and storm surge gates to protect vulnerable communities. The target? Restore or maintain over 300 square miles of wetlands. But here's the reality check. Even with all 77 projects combined, Louisiana's coastline will still shrink dramatically. Projections show that between 1,200 and 4,100 additional square miles could be lost, depending on storm activity and sea level rise. The plan isn't about stopping the loss. It's about slowing it down and protecting the most critical areas. Without this plan, the state faces 15 to $24 billion in damages annually. With it, they save 10 to $14 billion per year. This isn't hypothetical. Communities are already disappearing. Isle de Jean Charles, a small island in Terrebonne Parish, became America's first federally funded climate relocation. The residents, mostly Native American families, have watched their island shrink from over 20,000 acres to just 320. The land their ancestors lived on for generations has vanished beneath the gulf. Other bayou communities are facing the same future, permanent abandonment, entire ways of life vanishing. And the stakes go far beyond culture. Louisiana's coast supports a massive fishing industry, critical shipping infrastructure, including the Port of New Orleans, and a significant portion of America's oil and gas production. Losing this land doesn't just affect Louisiana, it affects the entire country. People aren't just losing land, they're losing history. 30 to 50 square kilometers every year. Louisiana's delta is collapsing faster than it can be rebuilt. Even $50 billion over 50 years won't fully stop it. But the state is trying, building diversions, rebuilding islands, creating marshes, fortifying levees. What happens next will decide the future of New Orleans, the Gulf Coast, and millions of people who call this region home. And the clock keeps ticking. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and activate the bell for more True Geo stories. Thank you for watching it, and see you in the next one.